Hello, welcome to Flip. So today we are on the topic of alkenes and these are the learning objectives for today. Uh, so if you recall from the alkene tutorial that we talked about in two videos back, alkenes, we said they were saturated. Okay, what this word means is that they are actually full. And what do I mean by that? Because between uh, two alkane molecules, okay, there are already four bonds. Remember, we told you that uh, between one carbon molecule, there should be four bonds. Am I right? Okay, so this is what it means to be full. Okay, full. In terms of there's only four bonds uh, to be maximum. But in the case of alkenes, it's a bit, a bit, a little, little bit different because it's not full in a sense. Okay, let me just write down not full because it exists like that. Okay, it's a carbon molecule double bonded to a another carbon molecule. Okay, and these empty spaces are H's. Okay, so what do I mean by that? What what is not full and what is full? Am I right? Okay, so this is. Uh, alkenes, this is alkenes. So not full is because this area, okay, this carbon, for example, is only surrounded by three, in some sense, three bonding sites. Am I right? This is the first, second, and third. It technically, you can change it to this. Okay, you can make it bond to four things. Okay, so there's a possibility for it to expand from this double bond into two single bonds. And that's why it's not full. There's still space for it to, you know, add on stuff. Okay, and that's what we mean by unsaturated. Sorry, this is spelled wrongly. Should be S A T. Okay, unsaturated. Okay, so that's why it's not full. And that's the difference between alkenes and alkenes. Okay, hopefully that's clear. Okay, the general formula general formula for alkenes is C N H two N. Remember we talk about this uh in the alkene chapter. If you have for example seven, uh n equals to seven, okay, then you just have to sub it back in here, right? So for example, it will be C seven H seven times two fourteen. Okay, so this is an example of alkene with its general formula of C N H two N. Okay, so this is the general formula for alkenes. Okay, the functional group for alkenes is obviously it's carbon-carbon uh, double bond. So what do I mean? It just looks like that. Carbon-carbon double bond. Okay, so if for example I draw a, an alkene compound for you, which we will talk about it later. Okay, sorry this one shouldn't exist here. Okay. Okay, so this, for example, this is called a, a butene. Okay, we'll talk about it later, don't worry. A butene. So where does it, where is its functional group? It's actually here. This is its functional group. Okay, this, all these areas are just, uh, additional, um, body parts, if you may. Okay, this is its main functioning area. Okay, so this is the functional group of, uh, alkenes, which is its double bond. Okay, let's move on to the naming of them. So if you if you recall, I told you the acronym for alkanes. It's me, it, peanut butter. Am I right? Okay. This is for math. Uh, F, prop, and butes. Am I right? Because this is one carbon, two carbon, three carbon, and four carbons. But in the case of alkenes, do you think we can have a methane? What do you think? No, right? Because the functional group has to be uh, a special bond between two carbons, which is a double bond. So there's no such thing as a methane because it cannot exist. Because the the most basic uh the most basic form of an alkene has to be two carbons. Okay, so in a the case there's no such thing as methane. But it starts from ethene instead. Okay, so it's it looks like this. Number of carbon has to be two. The name will be called ethene. Am I right? Okay, you just have to add the prefix and the suffix. In the case suffix, uh, in the case of alkene, the suffix is in. Formula will be C2H4. 
and it will look like this okay because there are two carbons now okay with uh, the empty spaces being hitch okay hopefully it's clear now propene is the same thing at the in with three carbons c3 h6 am i right because its formula is cn h2n okay so you sub in the n here as well so you will get a, a structure looking like this H C uh, C double bond C. Okay, the rest are H's. Okay, so uh you may ask me how do I uh draw the double bond? Like can I draw it here? Okay, of course uh, there's no problem drawing it here, uh just that it has only it can only have one. Okay, so you, you either draw it here or here. And if you take a closer look at this one. Remember I told you that in this chapter, okay, uh, the C can only have three uh, areas of bonding around it. Okay, so this is the one, two, three areas of bonding for this green C, whereas for this yellow C, okay, there should only be this three. Am I right? One, two, three. So you should not write this in. Okay, so this is my mistake. So you should only write uh, three areas of bonding. One, two, three. Okay, whereas this one is one, two, three. Okay, here will be butene. Okay, C4, H8. Because you have to just sub it in here. This one I'll draw it here uh, because it's a bit longer. So always start with the carbon-carbon chain, am I right? Okay. It doesn't matter where you write your double bond. It can be here, here, or here. Okay, just have to be one. Okay, and this one is all carbon. Okay, and this is all hydrogens. Okay, and let's recap. So if you if you can recall, this one is our alkane. Do you recall this part? If you just look at this part, this green C here is our alkane. And there's four bonding regions. Am I right? One, two, three, four. Because it's an alkene. But this area is an alkene portion. So this one only has three. Alright? Only has three bonding areas around it. One, two, and three. For this carbon, one, two, and three. Okay, so this is the difference between alkanes and alkenes. Because alke alkanes only have have four bonding areas alkenes only have three because two of it is used up as a double bond okay that's the difference between alkenes and alkenes okay so hopefully you know how to fill out this table from ethene to butene that is your in your uh, syllabus okay let's move on to these properties okay so the properties is really similar to alkenes uh, in the sense that down the group, so what we mean by down the group, okay, it means from, uh, in the case of alkene, it's ethene to propene to butene, and that's what we that's what we mean by down the group, okay, because as its number of C's increase, okay, so this is C two, this is C three, this is C four, as the number of C's increase, okay. As the number of C's increase, viscosity will increase. Remember we talked about this? That means it becomes thicker, am I right? So uh, imagine it's just a very small puddle of uh, water, okay, of, of liquid. Then if you increase the number of C, it actually becomes a whole very solid uh, liquid layer, for example. So it's harder to move now compared to this very thin layer, okay, Com compared to this very thick layer. Okay, melting point also increases because uh, it's harder to burn now correct compared to a small piece of paper compared to a whole forest now okay obviously it's harder to burn a forest than a tree and that is why flammability decreases okay because now it's harder to burn basically and uh, the state will change from a gas to a solid okay for example ethene is a gas okay ethene is a gas uh, but butene is uh, more of a liquid state Okay, because it becomes thicker. Okay, so everything is linked. 
So, uh, because viscosity is increased now, so everything becomes thicker and, uh, uh, the state changes from gas to solid eventually. Okay, maybe at around C100 or something. It'll become a solid. Okay, so that's, that is all for, uh, alkene's properties.